continue the, the series towels and titles it's about ministry and today if you have your bible let's go to acts chapter 6 i'm going to read from the same verses that i've read last sunday if you didn't bring a physical bible it's okay you have a phone and on your phone you can download your version bible app and there's notes there as well that you can follow through acts chapter 6 and verse 2 then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said it is not desirable that we should leave the word of god and serve tables verse 3 therefore brethren seek out from among you seven men of good reputation full of the holy spirit somebody say full of the holy spirit touch your neighbor say you got to be full of him full of the holy spirit and wisdom that we may appoint over this business touch your neighbor say mind your business <laughs> you got to have a business and you got to mind your business the bible says that they chose seven good men people who were of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom whom they may appoint over this business and then it continues to talk about stephen or what else he did he was full of faith and full of power in verse 8 and great wonders and signs he did among people through the holy spirit i want to speak about today the requirement that god had for in the first church the early church the requirement that they were looking for for people in ministry and for people in business because these seven men they were looking for they were not looking to appoint evangelists prophets pastors teachers and leaders of life groups they were looking to appoint people over a church business and what kind of people were looking for i mean you would think that they would look people with a good resume that's a, that's a normal thing to do people with great education but i want you to see the qualifications they were looking to appoint people for this business now i understand the word business here another word for duty another word for this assignment or this work but i believe that this is also a form which we need to take seriously at is that god sees being full of the holy spirit as a requirement for business and for church most of us think that you only need the Holy Spirit in the church. Nowadays we, we, we have churches where we don't even need to be full of the Holy Spirit. As long as you're full of information, you can run the church. As long as you're full of people's skills and administrative abilities and, and, and management abilities, you can run the church. As long as you can run your mouth, you can run the church. But in here it says that you need to be full of the Holy Spirit, not only for the ministry, but also for the marketplace. If you're taking your notes, I want you to write this down. It's being full of the Holy Spirit is not only for those in ministry, but also those in marketplace. If you are running a business, if you are leading a family, being full of the Holy Spirit is not limited to a church ministry that deals with demons, sicknesses, or people's sins or problems. You need the Holy Spirit the same way pastor needs the Holy Spirit to preach and the amazing part the Holy Spirit is available the same way to you as the Holy Spirit is available to evangelist to pastor to apostle and to a deacon or anybody else who has a church position I believe that Christians don't have second Holy Spirit and pastors have the senior Holy Spirit there is no junior Holy Spirit we all have the same Holy Ghost that raised Christ from the dead the same spirit that Christ had is the same spirit that's available to you and the same spirit is available to me. Please do not put Holy Spirit in a box where he belongs on the church stage and somewhere in the crusade, somewhere in prayer for healing or somewhere in prayer for deliverance. The Holy Spirit had to fill people to run business. Now in the Old Testament there's an example of that. Uh, Joseph was a guy who was in prison and he was full of the Holy Spirit. When he was full of the Holy Spirit in prison, he was able to translate dreams. Quickly he became promoted and started to run the prison. After a while he got an opportunity to stand in front of Pharaoh and without qualifications, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was able to translate the dreams and not only translate the dream, but also give him an insight to save the whole country and the economy of that whole nation and because of the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit not only Joseph was relieved and released from prison he stepped into the palace and Joseph was not a pastor Joseph was in the political arena 
same can be applied to educational arena same can be applied to a government arena same can be applied to media arena same can be applied to religious arena any arena you are in holy spirit has something to do holy spirit is able to do something in that arena i love what pharaoh said pharaoh said to his servants can we find such as one as this a man in whom is the spirit of god now think about it pharaoh is a demon possessed god pharaoh thinks he's god yet he recognizes joseph is full of the holy spirit when you're full of the holy spirit you will walk in faith you will walk in wisdom and you will walk in power stephen had wisdom stephen had faith and the bible says in here stephen had power and he did wonders and miracles these are the three things we are all looking for in business and in ministry to have faith meaning to be positive that's why hashtag monday motivation is so popular because everybody's trying us to be positive in the world positivity is the goal in the kingdom positivity is the benefit of being full of the holy spirit everyone is looking for wisdom and wisdom is more than information wisdom is what to do in a particular situation that can get you out of that situation and everyone is looking for power to deal with their weakness to deal with their surroundings and to deal with things they cannot control they need power dunamis power people relied on white power some on black power some on green power with the holy spirit you got the holy power holy ghost power it's the best power it's a clean power it doesn't control dominate manipulate it saves it heals it restores and it blesses people it's the best power somebody give God some praise but I want you to see that power is a result of being full of the Holy Spirit you need power in your workplace you need wisdom in your workplace you need faith in your family in every situation these are the three things every person needs and Holy Spirit says if I feel you these three things will be bonus what the world seeks I will add to you so we don't seek wisdom faith and power we seek the Holy Spirit and be full of him and wisdom faith and power is something we have access to in the Holy Spirit you may say Vlad that is all cool you know this whole idea of being full of the Holy Spirit but let's be realistic I'm too busy for it you know your alternative the alternative of being full of the Holy Spirit is being full of self you're gonna be full of something and being full of self is one step away from being full of stress being full of sin and then being full of Satan the alternative to being full of the Holy Spirit is not being full of joy it's being full of self and self is just an open door for stress anxiety depression sin and eventually satan we don't have an alternative that is good our only best alternative is to live our life full of the holy spirit now i understand you may sitting here today and your idea and my idea of the full being full of the holy spirit is not always consistent with the bible when we think of being full of the holy spirit some of us think is go oh, wow, holy ghost that will get you kicked out of your job that's weird but some of us we grew up you know oh, holy ghost or like you jerk all the time or or something and we said well, that, that, that's anointing that's weird holy spirit is wild but he's not weird joseph didn't stand there in front of pharaoh and jerked joseph didn't stand there with the flag he didn't give you know spoken tongues Joseph he had wisdom Joseph had faith and Joseph had power that even a secular court not being religious toward God they still recognize the power of God sometimes we have this view of being full of the Holy Spirit it's like it's gonna make you weird it's gonna make you crazy it's gonna make you like like something that people will reject being full of the Holy Spirit is not like that that scripture says don't be drunk with wine but be full be filled with the Holy Spirit that tells me that being filled with the Holy Spirit does not depend on the Holy Spirit it depends on me let me say that again that depends on you not the Holy Spirit it's like this you have water connected to your house the city puts the water into your house but how much water comes out of the faucet does not depend on the city it depends now on you you control you regulate 
the flow of that water. God puts the Spirit inside of you on salvation. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit is now here. But how much of that Spirit you will live in and how much you surrender to will depend on the faucet of your surrender. Will depend on the faucet of your drinking from Him, feeding on holy things and relying, feeding the spiritual things in your heart so you can build your spiritual man. Don't be drunk with wine but be filled with Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul, he gives us a comparison between drinking and being full of the Holy Spirit. Now, none of us here today are the drink of alcohol. We're holy people. But you know some people who drink. Okay, that was supposed to be <laughs> truth. How many of you know that having alcohol in your house doesn't get you drunk? It's a potential. You don't become drunk because you have alcohol. You become drunk when the liquor leaves the bottle and goes into your mouth. Having the Holy Spirit in your heart doesn't make you full of the Holy Spirit. It's a potential. It's when you yield to the Holy Spirit is when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says be filled. It doesn't say wait for the Spirit to fill you. It means it's the same way as with, as with, with alcohol. You don't wait for Jack Daniels to overpower you and go inside of you. You don't wait for tequila to come out of Mexico and come into your streets and come on you and say, be drunk. Nobody gets drunk like that. You bring it to your house and then you start drinking it and then you get drunk. The Holy Spirit lives in you and as a Christian, when you yield to the Holy Spirit, when you read the Holy Scriptures, when you come to a life group, when you surround yourself with right people, something begins to happen. You begin to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why when you leave Sunday morning service, you leave filled. What happened? You came to a spiritual place that fills you. When you interact with holy things or holy people, you become filled. It's not only speaking in tongues. It's being and surrounding yourself with holy things and feeding yourself on holy things. Fe being filled with Holy Spirit is so simple. It's fellowshipping with people who are walking with God. It's reading God's Word. It's talking to the Holy Spirit or talking to God. It's obeying what he says and it's feeding your mind, your eyes with things that help your spiritual person instead of feeding yourself with junk. And next thing you know, you walk being full of the Holy Spirit. You will be full of something. You decide what you're going to be full of. The Holy Spirit or selfishness. I heard this testimony of Herb. Herb and Anita were, we can put a photo of Herb. Herb was, he was an alcoholic. And he loved to smoke. Worked two jobs just to pay for his drinking habits and for his smoking habits. On the top of that, his daughter, his wife and his daughter, Anita, they had, she had this problem with allergies where twice a week they had to have shots and these were so expensive. Herb spent, put all of his money and all of his expenses actually, he paid with a credit card. He was so behind on everything in his finances. And one day his wife goes to a women's conference and there she hears about Jesus. She gives her life to the Lord. And on the top of that, she learns about tithing. So she comes back to him. Not only she comes back crazy on fire for Jesus, she comes back and says, we're going to be tithing. Now keep in mind, these people don't have enough to pay for their bills because they're always drinking and their daughter is sick. So he says, I can't. I don't have, we don't have money to tithe. So he gives this radical prayer, not even knowing Jesus as his personal Savior and Lord. He does this radical prayer. He said, Lord, if you want us to tithe, you're going to have to make some room for, for money. That means that something needs to go. Uh, alcohol and smoking. He knew that God will never deliver him from it because he loved it so much. He says, if you take away the craving for alcohol and smoking, I will tithe. The next day, he woke up and craving was gone. He was tried to drink it. It couldn't. Completely free. So he started to tithe. So the money he spent on alcohol, he started to give to God. Within a few months, his daughter gets miraculously, unexplainably healed of allergies. In 1981, Herb, few weeks later after that, goes to church, goes to the altar and pastor says, why are you here? He says, I want Jesus. I've seen Jesus deliver me. I've seen Jesus restore me. I've seen Jesus heal my daughter. I want to get saved. Shortly after, Herb, who was working two jobs to pay for his habits, now God delivered him from those habits. He gets one job working selling engineer products to Navy. He made more money in one job than he was making in two jobs. Things are going so well. And God in a dream gives him a vision of a particular device that can power up a helicopter. 
So he offered it to the government and they rejected that offer because they had their own, you know, their own product. His business keep going, everything is going great. 14 years later, the same offer, the, God, the same idea God gave him in the dream, the government rejected. The government picks it up again and says we're interested in it and they awarded him I think 94 million dollar contract for what God gave him in the dream 14 years before. See there's a difference between being full of self, living from paycheck to paycheck, drinking yourself to sleep and there's a difference when you're full of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying you won't have problems but I'm saying something is different about your life. You will be full of something. And God is saying here today to people over business, over marketplace, over home groups, over ministries, He says, I want you to be full of the Holy Spirit. It's not only because I want you to be tongue speaking and spiritual and grow feathers. It's because I want you to walk in wisdom. I want you to walk in power and I want you to walk in faith. I want you to be, have access to my creative power, to my anointing and to my grace. Any full of the Holy Spirit people we have in this room today? Touch your neighbor say, you got to be full of Him. It says not only you have to be full of the Holy Spirit, but secondly it says you have to be of good reputation. Good reputation. Reputation is very important. All business hinges on reputation. And your reputation hinges on your service or your character. And then of course a lot of times we live in a world today where your reputation or your reviews are so important. I just went to a chiropractor a few, uh, few weeks ago and they said, we'll give you a discount if you promise to leave a good review. I'm like, I haven't even been there yet. They're like, if you promise to leave a review, you know, we'll, we'll give you a discount. Uh, I was in uh, Missouri where a pastor's wife uh, had a dental work done and then it was, her teeth were hurting. And so they scheduled an appointment to fix the, the work that they did. She went in there and it was before Christmas and the office said, oh, we'll reschedule you three weeks from now. She's like, I am dying in pain. I, I can't take this anymore. She's like, well, sorry, we're, we're out for, uh, for Christmas. So she goes back home and the son, teenage son, hears about this, pulls out his Google account and leaves a bad review for that hospital. Two hours later, the main doctor calls the husband and says, when are you guys ready to come and see my wife? I can see your wife. <laughs> Reviews is the reputation. That's why many people come to our church because our church has a lot of reviews. Mostly good. <laughs> I want you to see here is the Apostle Paul, apostles were looking for people with good reputation. You would think the church would look for people with good character. Church was looking for people with reputation. Because businesses and churches, they operate. People trust people because of reviews and reputation. Now, reputation is based on character reputation is your photo character is your face i have a photo where i am without a beard my license and my passport has no beard at all so as you can imagine when i go to tsa tsa they look at me they're like who is that i'm like that's bc days before <laughs> that's that's me before so my photo has not been updated but you know one thing is that photo will be updated if I keep on wearing this handsome beard my photo will be updated and my photo will look exactly like my face sooner or later your reputation will match your character but people don't do business with you because of your character they do it because of your reputation and the church knew that and therefore they didn't look for people with character they looked for people with reputation but character is the one that produces reputation I want you to see this about Stephen it says a little bit later that Stephen's face in chapter 6 verse 15 the last verse of chapter 6 it says and all who sat in the council they saw his face as a face of an angel not only Stephen's reputation was good but it says in here in front of his enemies Stephen's face was shining I believe your face speaks of, rep of your character but your reputation what people say about you speaks of your reputation as Christians who are full of the Holy Spirit we must understand not the only Holy Spirit helps me to do business or to do ministry with his power but the Holy Spirit one more step I want to take is he face he changes my face he changes my character which in result will change my reputation Holy Spirit causes your face to shine in other words, he causes your character, 
your behavior, your attitude to change and even your enemies take a notice of that. Now for those of you who are married men and you have wives who take a lot of time before they go to sleep on their face, I just wanted to say I am sorry. I am with you in the same great struggle. I fall asleep most of the time before my wife finishes all the facial work that she needs to do. And one time she put this thing on her face, I screamed because she came into the room and she looked dark and I have some photos, not of my wife, I wouldn't dare not to do that. I would make fun of other girls but not my wife, not in her absence. Like stuff like this, people put on, if you can give us some other photos, like this stuff? When we were kids, we, when we got our stuff on the face like that, that was an accident. Now on purpose, women would pay money to put garbage on their face and walk around for 30 minutes. Not to make their face shine, to make their face just look better. Now as men, we're graced by God, we don't need to do that. Because wrinkles add wisdom. I want you to notice this, Stephen did not put a mask, moisture or lotion to make his face shine. There was no spotlight on Stephen's face to cause it to shine. There was a light on the inside that caused it to shine. Stephen didn't work for his face to shine. He was filled with Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit changed his face. I want to propose something to you this morning. If you are not full of the Holy Spirit, you will seek to repair your reputation and change your character. People who are full of the Holy Spirit, they don't worry about their reputation or work on their character. They cultivate relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit affects their character and their character changes their reputation. Let me say that again. Without being full of the Holy Spirit, you will constantly fight People who talk bad about you, monitor who's gossiping about you, what are they saying, why are they saying, I need to explain. You will always repair your reputation. But the real problem is your character. Then you realize the reason why they're saying bad stuff is because I have something to do with it. Then you're going to work on your character. That's when you're full of self. But when you're full of the Spirit, you cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit and that relationship it affects your face, it affects your attitude, it affects your behavior and your character affects your reputation. The pressure is off. You don't try to suppress your bad desires, you surrender to the Holy Spirit. You don't try to buffet and discipline your body, you like Paul says we present our body as a living sacrifice. We don't strive to change we yield to the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called the fruit of the Spirit, good character. It doesn't say fruit of my efforts and my discipline and my rigid, hard, legalistic lifestyle. That is called work of the flesh. If you're working on it, it's flesh. If the Holy Spirit is working on it, it's fruit of the Holy Spirit. Being full of the Holy Spirit is not only good for your business, it's good for your character. Being full of the Holy Spirit is very good for your character. Every person in this room is working on some kind of an area of their character right now. It's whether you talk too much or talk too little. You hug too much or you don't hug at all. It's either you, you're negative or you're insecure. It's either anger, explosive things, you watch things you shouldn't watch, you maybe find yourself struggling with some habits that you're trying to control yourself. Every person has some things that they're worrying and they're working on their character. And I want to give you the freedom today to stop working on your character. My simple logic is this. How far did it got you already? Pretty sure nowhere. Scripture says Jews tried to get righteous, never attained it. Gentiles didn't try to get righteous and got it. You work on your character, it only gets worse. It's called work of the flesh. You work on relationship with Holy Spirit, He changes your character slowly and He gets the credit for it, not you. You can't accredit your prayer life, your fasting or your discipline or your reminders on your phone or your therapy. All of those have their place but as full of the Holy Spirit people, we work on our relationship and that relationship changes our character. 
Jesus called his disciples and said come and follow me I will make you he didn't say hey come and change he says you preoccupy yourself with following me I will do the work of changing you and making you into something you are crazy excited about I will make you camera team let me tell you the difference between apple and apple this is the gift this is the fruit the gifts of the Holy Spirit they're nice very nice uh, they tell you things like we were worshiping and it was saying hey the, the place you're in is too loud 10 more minutes and your ears are gonna hurt I, I showed Ilya I was like Ilya I'm gonna die <laughs> that's that's the gift it has so many awesome features it's so important it helps me to track my fitness it helps me to read messages it's it's, it's beautiful that is the gift you wear it you use it has functions this is the fruit the fruits you know understand you know where they're made not in China okay maybe some in China but they're they're made in the garden where the trees don't strive trees just just trees and fruits are produced slowly first they're sour and then they're sweet see when Holy Spirit is working on your character your character first will be sour and you don't guilt trip yourself with it you just know one thing I keep cultivating a relationship and he keeps working and if your if your wife says nah your character is still sour says because Holy Spirit is working <laughs> if your patience is sour Holy Spirit is working if you still need not there where you're supposed to be you don't go back and pick it up to working on it you say Holy Spirit is working and I have to be sour before I'm sweet <laughs> fruit the benefit of a fruit is this if you're full of the Holy Spirit, you work on your relationship, not on your character. He will produce it slowly. He will make it sour before it's sweet. But then the best part is this. People around you will be nourished as a result of you yielding to the Holy Spirit. Your spouse will not have to have counseling to deal with the damages of your words. Because you will be a fruit. You know what they do with fruits? They eat them. I always say this. When you have a fruit of the Spirit, your spouse will be fed by you. Without the fruit of the Spirit, they will be fed up with you. When you have a fruit of the Spirit, your parents will be fed by you. This is exactly what's going to happen with a Spirit-filled person at home. Parents will do this. Mm. You clean that house, wash the dishes, you home on time. Man, so good. Hey son, do you need any money? Let me find you some. Why? Because when you're full of the Holy Spirit, you have a fruit of the Spirit. When you have a fruit of the Spirit, you will feed those near you. You can impact the stages with this, but you will always feed with your fruit. That's why you can make nations think you're anointed and your family doesn't want to talk to you. Because you got the gift. But you don't have the fruit but how do you get the fruit you're filled with Holy Spirit you cultivate relationship you don't work on your character you work on your relationship he produces the fruit and the people around you get the benefit of eating from the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and if you don't have it you starve people around you and they will always say things we're fed up with you not because you don't have the anointing not because you don't have the gifting it's because you're working on your character and your reputation instead of working on your relationship that will produce your character and your reputation somebody say amen somebody touch your neighbor and say don't work on your character touch your neighbor and say cultivate relationship cultivate intimacy with God don't try to fix your issues fix your intimacy with God can somebody say amen come on can somebody say amen somebody needed to hear this right now that is a word for somebody in this room. God is bringing freedom because you've been under stress trying to change your character. And God is saying, listen, I want to change that for you. But I want you to spend time with me. I want you to spend time in my word. I want you to make relationship a priority instead of your character. Church, are you with me? just want to encourage somebody in this room with that. And lastly, not only Holy Spirit helps me with business and it helps me with ministry, but Holy Spirit changes my character. And then lastly is the Holy Spirit, He changes my focus. In chapter 7, verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart 
and they gnashed their teeth at him and he but he but he so look, look what happened they accused him falsely they dragged him to court they made up all kinds of stories about him and now they're sitting in there <sighs> they're physically emotionally hating him but he full of the Holy Spirit this is the source of when I hit hellish situations this is what I go to this scripture how could Stephen be full of the Spirit when he was surrounded with nasty people false accusations and hellish situation that tells me being full of the Holy Spirit does not stop bad things from happening being full of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you will always be healthy and wealthy. Being full of the Holy Spirit does not mean things will always be as you dream of. Sometimes you can be full of the Holy Spirit and car still breaks down. You can be full of the Holy Spirit and the body still breaks down. You can be full of the Holy Spirit and the spouse still leaves you. You can be full of the Holy Spirit and children still misbehave. But the enemy is after making you leak. When you're going through a hellish situation but Stephen stood his ground the Bible says but he full of the Holy Spirit full of the Holy Spirit see when life gets hard don't leak don't spill when life gets hard don't lose your intimacy with God and don't have this idea about God that God is only there to make you healthy, wealthy and soft. God is first and foremost the maker of heaven and the earth. God is first and foremost the father of yours and he is the savior of yours. When life gets hard, don't cause empty people around you to empty you. Don't cause difficult situations to cause you to leak everything out and stand there and saying now I am full of depression. I am full of anxiety. I am full of nightmares. Why? Because look at what I'm surrounding with. But he, full of the Holy Spirit. I can't control what people said. I can't control what they're doing. I can't control that they're gnashing their teeth at me. I can't control that they're picking up the stones and they're running at me. I can't control what's going to happen. But he. I can't control my situation. I can't control my body sometimes. I can't control what happens, how my body reacts to particular diseases, but I can control my fullness. That's nobody's power. I don't surrender the power to the enemy. I don't give that power to anybody, but he, full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed at heaven and he saw Jesus. See, I love this. The Holy Spirit doesn't stop the hellish situation. But He seals me on the outside from that situation to get inside. The Holy Spirit, if He doesn't deliver me from that problem, He will stop the me from draining His presence into that problem. If He doesn't cure that disease right now, He wants to pro provide a silicone. He wants to provide a ceiling for me so that I can stand in a dry boat and around me is a storm. I can have peace and around me is tension. I can have health even though around me is sickness. I can have victory even though around me is defeat. I can be full of the Holy Ghost. But He, but He, full of the Holy Spirit. He gazed at heaven and what caught my attention is the fact Stephen did not see his breakthrough. He saw his God. Stephen did not see deliverance. He saw a deliverer. I know people who quit their faith because when things were hard they saw their miracle and miracle never came and they dropped the Holy Spirit. They spilled everything and they said I thought God will deliver me. See, when the Holy Spirit fills you in your hardest time, He doesn't sh show you a miracle. He shows you something bigger, a miracle maker. His eyes is not on your breakthrough. His eyes on the Savior. He came to lift your gaze on Jesus. And the Bible says, Stephen saw heaven. Can I give you a little tip? When you're faced with hell, Holy Spirit will help you to see heaven. 
not a breakthrough and that's important please understand we believe in breakthrough we believe in having visions bigger than our reality we believe that when you're sick God wants to give you a picture of your healthy body we believe that when you are facing financial struggles God wants to give you that but please understand if that's the job of the Holy Spirit that means Holy Spirit is not aware of eternity he's not aware of what's going to happen after death Holy Spirit is eternal he's looking further than that and he's giving your eyes an object and this is the object God Jesus God that even if you don't get healed, you don't live as a defeated person. Even if you don't get the breakthrough, your eyes are gazed at heaven when you're going through hell. And I love this, he saw Jesus. But something that catches my attention is that he saw Jesus standing. In all other times in the Bible, you see Jesus sitting. Here, he's standing. I don't know why he's standing. I'm thinking maybe he's seeing Stephen in the midst of a hellish situation, nasty people, accusation and he's full of the Holy Spirit and Jesus said, if you're standing up for me, I'm standing up for you. Yeah. I'm gonna stand up for you. It doesn't look like I'm standing up for you in your situation but I'm standing up for you in heaven. I think Jesus was also getting ready and said, Stephen, I'm standing up because I'm about to welcome you. I'm about to meet you. We're about to have a meeting face to face. And the problems you're facing, they will vanish away. See, I think a lot of us as Christians, we, we forgot heaven. When we go through hellish situations and we charismatics, we're so focused on our breakthrough that sometimes we miss heaven. The real breakthrough is heaven, my friends. God wants you to see heaven when you're going through hell. I love this about Stephen is it says not only that he saw Jesus standing but the Bible says this is that Stephen, the worship team can come up, it says that Stephen said this, to your hands Lord I give my spirit or I give my heart to you God, I give my spirit to you Jesus and I want to tell somebody in this room today that if you are facing something very challenging, Holy Spirit will help you to direct your focus on heaven when you're faced with hell and secondly when things get harder to focus on heaven, to focus on God, ask God to take your spirit. When you can't keep your spirit from being infected and affected by your situation, surrender it. Spirit-filled people don't surrender to their sickness. Spirit-filled people don't surrender to doctor's report. They only surrender to someone able to change everything and his name is Jesus. Don't surrender to your surroundings. You might not be able to change what's happening around you. You might not be able to change your family. You might not be able to change your marriage. But you can surrender it like Stephen and say, Jesus, into your hands I give my spirit. I'm not giving my spirit to these haters. I'm not giving them the power. I'm not giving my spirit to my problem because my problem will trample it, squash it and destroy it and laugh at it and spit on it. Jesus, they took my body. They will destroy it right now with their stones. They will disembark it. And my body will stop breathing but they cannot reach my spirit and I cannot keep it right now because it's too hard but I'm giving it to you. Satan can't take what you give to God and when things get really difficult in ministry or in business or in your family I want to encourage you do not surrender to those surroundings don't let the water on the outside get on the inside so you drown surrender it to your savior surrender it to the spirit and in that moment you can pray a 15 second prayer and say holy spirit right now I'm about to collapse right now the lid is about to go up I'm about I'm about to die but I surrender to you and something happens the bible says that Stephen looked at those people if he wouldn't be surrendered to the Holy Spirit, he would have cursed them. He would have said, God, I thank you that they will reap what they sowed. God, I thank you. They're all going to burn in hell. Instead, he says, Lord, they committed many sins. Could you do me a favor? And the sin they're about to commit, could you remove it from their record? Don't count it as a sin for them. How could a person in the middle of their pain not react but respond to God? When you surrender to the Holy Spirit at your hardest days, he will change your focus. He will help you not to react but to respond. And this is the most amazing part. The people who you were thought were nasty, God still can change them. Because one of the boys over there was holding the clothes of every one of those killers. And that boy became the author of one third of the New Testament. Stephen forgave and God changed those people. Your enemies still can change. 
we believe in the power of the gospel we believe in the power of grace we believe in God who heals the sick God who delivers the captives and most importantly God who changes hearts and he will use your pain he will use your forgiveness he will use your attitude in the most difficult situation where things were done to you that are unfair things that were done to you they're unjust and those people deserve to sit in jail and those situations God deserves to come and smite everybody and kill everybody but please don't forget while you're asking your vengeful God to kill everybody you're also part of that everybody you're gonna suffer from the same vengeance it's best to gaze your eyes at heaven when you feel hell it's best to allow him to give your heart to him instead of hold on to your own hurt feelings and allow him to help you respond instead of reacting.